the actual space can. Right. But that's really kind of the leap because, like, with the iPad or with the iPod or with the goggles, I can buy and, and equip myself personally without a massive investment in the infrastructure. You don't get the immersive spaces, do you? Or, or some sort yeah, of massive so, but, standardization? Yeah, but here's what I'm trying, here's what I'm trying to uh, uh, pitch that. Uh, if it's so, ch this is a pretty sophisticated computer. If it's yeah. so ch cheap and accessible to make this this device, we can make other devices that would very easily uh, uh, fit in our uh, current environment without huge investment. For example, if they fit in a light bulb, right, say. right, right. But there are other form factors, not just this light bulb thing that I'm talking yeah. about. You can think about uh, goggles. Is is you know we're you know, coming from a consumer electron company. Like I've seen. Like one thing that we were, you, you were talking about your customers and you, you guys should echo on this, like people change behaviors very slowly. Like we think this is fast and all that, but this is like just the end of like 40 years of display centric devices that we got used to using. And we're kind of okay with and like we feel good with the QWERTY keyboard and all this kind of stuff, right? But I remember like growing up, my computer didn't have a mouse, right? And it was fine. Right, and then now I can't imagine the thing without a mouse. And the kids growing up today will not imagine anything without, you know, something they can wave their hands in front of. After six hours of using that, I want to touch my laptop. <laughs> yeah. So, so my, my my point is, is like we should, like, like we should to break out of this like device paradigm. It's not if we'll just bring the screen even closer to our faces and like wear them all day long. It just means another device to charge, another device to update the software, another device to instead of this this room should be a computer. And that's been a promise of ubiquitous computer, pervasive computing, all this kind of stuff, but you know, it didn't happen yet. Yet we have all this technology, hence the paradox we need to solve. Okay. Anybody else uh, volunteer for the goggles? You said you'd wear the ski. You, you said you'd wear the ski goggles. I'll, I'll wear the ski. I'll, like, I'll, I'll say this. That, okay. I'll use that. We have a pretty good relationship with Google. So you can't I say anything, kid. No, I'm going to go the opposite. Way. I haven't even asked them to see, and I'm not going to. And, and, and if and when they material, I just can't, I mean, I have to go with Nathan on this. It's just like, I just don't think people are ready to hang stuff on their face all day long when they don't need to. I mean, Brett's a perfectly attractive man with his glasses, but if he didn't have to wear his glasses, he probably wouldn't. Um, I don't have to wear glasses, so I'm probably not going to start. There would have to be a hell of something going on in there. And um, maybe, maybe there is. Um, but but I, I'm not, uh, just with the current levels of technology that I understand visiting over at your house, I just don't see that being uh, anything I've got to just get over to Mountain View immediately and, and, and look at. But that's just mine. Not to mention we had glasses for a bunch of time, right? They were available. They, they don't do much, but they provide like the core experience. But they didn't get it yeah. for some reason. The best part, when the New York Times came out with that article, and obviously everybody picked up, is, is read the read the, the, the reader comments. <laughs> they're hilarious, because they're like, oh, you can just see somebody driving with those things on. 